Good morning, and welcome to the first talk of Art Basel Conversations. Um, my name is Mark Spiegler, director of Art Basel. This is one of our favorite parts of the show, because in addition to all of the great work that you can see, it's also wonderful for you to be able to hear from artists and curators. Um, we have two of the most important artists and curators here on stage. Richard Tuttle, um, an artist whose connection to Florida is particularly strong. Not only is he in virtually every permanent collection of muse museums down here, but he also has done large outdoor works um, at Aqua, and he has even curated a show at the Wolfsonian, which is one of the most interesting institutions in this region. Um, he has also brought with us not only, we often, people, people are, often bring slides, but have not, not only an artwork, but also tapestries, I think is a first. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful so many of you were able to come. I know 10 o'clock in the morning is not an easy thing in Miami Beach. Uh, if you can't make it to every one of these, I'd like to remind you that all of these uh, videos will be online almost immediately afterwards. Um, it's a project that we've started a long time ago and that has been accelerated even more through our, co through our cooperation with the Absolute Art Bureau. So um, make it to all of them that you can and watch the other ones in the comfort of your own home. On that note, I'll let you hear from the people you actually woke up early to come and hear from, Richard Tuttle and Chris Turcon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. Welcome, Richard. Thank you. Uh, it's a true pleasure uh, and, and, of course, always a honor to be here for you with Richard Tuttle because we kind of celebrate uh, these months our 30th anniversary. I met Richard Tuttle as a kid. I was called director of the Galerie Yvonne Lambert and Albert Baronian in Ghent. And the first show I had to do, I was actually uh, the concierge or the cleaner, but the first show I had to do was uh, to work with Richard to hang a show of his beautiful little tiny aquarels on paper with these delicate, delicate self-made wooden frames. And uh, it took us at least three weeks to hang the show because the show had to hang on a very specific copper nail, 184 centimeters from the floor. And after having been worked for three weeks and a very successful opening, I got that one postcard uh, in the mail saying or suggesting that I would now be ready to change the order. So you can imagine that I was a little bit irritated, Richard, but then again, uh, your postcard and what you wrote, that was, and it's for me, the slogan of my life, also as director of Tate Modern. Once the order has been found, everything can be changed around. And that's thanks to Richard Tuttle. Uh, you will see slides behind us. Richard has brought objects. He brought textiles and a pot. Actually, it's not a pot. It's a print as a pot and a pot as a print. We will talk about that later. These slides you will see every 20 seconds, so you get to see 30 slides seven times in a row. And it's a little bit like a change operation, a uh, chance operation by Merce Cunningham and John Cage. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here with Richard because we should not only share uh, some uh, communal artistic experiences like hanging uh, frames on copper nails uh, 184 centimeters from the floor, but we also share a passion for textiles and pots and uh, Whereby Richard is the true maker and the true lover and the true scholar I'm just the amateur, but anyway, we decided to join forces again and Richard and I and our teams in London We are preparing a retrospective of Richard works with textiles which he started in 1965 for the Whitechapel Art Gallery He's going to curate as an infiltrator an exhibition of ancient ritual textiles from the collection of the Victorian Eldred Museum at the same time. And in the Turbine Hall of Tate Modern, we are producing a huge work fabricated by textile. Um, we are going to explain to you why we like textiles and why we like pots. Just have to say that Richard Tuttle, it's, a, it's an interesting experience when we introduced him to the curators, the scholars of the Victorian Albert Museum, the textile curators, they said, ooh, you're Richard Tuttle. They didn't mean at all the artist who met Agnes Martin in 1963, who had his first solo show at Betty Parsons in 1965, who had an amazing experience with Marsha Tucker in 1975 at the Whitney, and who had his grand retrospective started in San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, they meant something else. 
They didn't know that Richard was a true hero of post-minimalist sculpture. They meant Richard Tuttle, the textile scholar, because they knew Richard Tuttle because of his work about textiles with eminent textile scholars like Kahlenberg. They also knew Richard Tut Tuttle as one of our curators when I was director in Rotterdam at the Boymans van Beuningen, a pottery show called Oxide Red. They didn't know he was an artist and a true lover, maker, scholar of textiles and potteries. And that said, he has also an amazing collection of pots, pans, and textiles as well. Richard Tuttle is well known in uh, Miami. You see the slide here because uh, commissioned by Craig Robbins and Aqua, a real estate development which uh, Terry Riley describes as a spin-off actually of the Weissenhof Siedlung 1937 of Stuttgart, he created with Susan Richard this amazing work in ceramics, ceramic styles produced in Turkey. And I do think that you should pay, at least try to pay a visit to the Weissenhof Siedlung of Miami, Aqua, at the Ellison Island, because the work which Richard did there is, I think, um, very important, because it's always said that Richard Tuttle is working on small scale, and he makes tiny sculptures. Well, this is a big one. Actually, I think it's very important to ask Richard today what the difference is between scale and size, because indeed, ladies and gentlemen, art is getting sometimes too big. <laughs> Richard, um, you wrote in a book uh, which you published with uh, Kahlenberg, you wrote the following beautiful line. Of course, you refer to your experiences and your friendships with uh, Reinhardt, uh, with Agnes Martin, when you, and of course, Albers, when you speak about textiles. But in that little book, you wrote the following phrase, weaving has a certain cast of the future, while pottery does of the past. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, sorry, Chris. I, I, I guess I'm a little bit known for these uh, uh, kind of uh, you know, statements that leave people asking that same question. What, the, what does he mean? Uh, um, in, in that in that case, the uh, I find uh, uh, you know one of the artist's uh, jobs is to uh, to help uh, the, uh, state in some way uh, where human life on this planet is uh, at a moment, and um, and I find uh, my sense of uh, is that we're uh, the uh, most of our, our civilizations and cultures uh, have followed a kind of energetics from east west you know the uh, you know western culture has gone into the sunset and eastern culture has gone into the sunrise and we've uh, met uh, and uh, at that meeting point uh, it seems to me there uh, is a switch to a, uh, a north-south energetics uh, and uh, that the north-south ener energetics uh, has a textile primacy, uh, whereas east-west energetics is pottery primacy. Wow, that's, uh, yeah. that, these kind of expressions make you truly loved by scholars, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. well, no, they don't. Uh, they, they prefer uh, uh, something that's been uh, said before and they can repeat <laughs> uh, for the third time. Uh, but it, it's, uh, I find, uh, I, I, as I've uh, had a, a, very, a, a very hard time believing anything. Uh, and uh, that's not, uh, doesn't make it uh, life that uh, happy. Um, but what I do is uh, try to uh, uh, use creative uh, energy that we all have uh, and, and we use to uh, some degree or another degree, but, but to use it uh, to uh, and direct it toward finding the origin of things. Uh, and I find personally, if I get to the origin of something, then I can immediately go back uh, this happened very much with my relationship to uh, pre-Columbian textiles, which is really one of the great textile traditions on earth. Uh, and it, it certainly uh, the textile meant 
more to them uh, than it's uh, uh, almost any, anyone else. And, but I, I, you know, I looked into this field year after year after year and, and couldn't commit as a collector, you know, that moment when you say, oh, you know, I, I, want, I want this in my life. Uh, and, uh, but I happened to be in a gallery in San Francisco uh, and I kept pushing the dealer and pushing the dealer and in the end uh, came out these two little balls uh, which I uh, undid on the rug and they each one of them was from the Chavin culture of Peru which was the culture which domesticated cotton uh, for the first time, uh, the culture which invented the writing system that was used all the way up until the Aztecs. Uh, and, I, and it was in fact the mother culture uh, of textiles, the original culture that made textiles. And from that, my next acquisition was Inca textiles, which is at the end, 2,500 years later. When, when did know. that fascination for textiles start? Did it have anything to do with uh, you getting to know artists like Ed Reinert, Agnes Martin, uh, and others? Well, um, in, I can say uh, uh, in 67, uh, um, uh, I began using uh, canvas uh, as the material of my work. And at that point, uh, I, uh, I would choose a material and, and look at it and try to get out of it the, uh, the thing that uh, both satisfied me and, and explored that material simultaneously. And that was the art you could say. Um, and of course, when it, c it came to textile, uh, the piece became an irregular uh, octagonal that had no back, no top, no front. It could be on the wall or it could be on the floor. Uh, and, and so, you know, in that sense, all the information that, you know, like infinite and beyond information is available. And yet, uh, when it was on the wall, for example, uh, you, uh, you had a, a kind of uh, horrifying experience, at least I did, that one didn't have access to the information on the back. And, and that tension between this feeling on the one hand exposed to every and any kind of information, and on the other hand, feeling absolutely cut off mm -hmm. from the information that might even be what you think is the uh, most important. And I think that's, you know, so in the, as far as textile is concerned, I came to it, you know, honestly, you know, as it were, through my own work. And in trying to understand my own work, I began looking at textiles of other cultures, including, uh, uh, you know, man-made fibers, uh, finishes, and, and so the, really the, the, the vast uh, field of, of uh, and it's always in pursuit of that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, uh, I think the, uh, uh, this is a, a, a quote from, from Agnes, Agnes Martin where, where uh, she said that the, as far as the artist is concerned, the only thing you have uh, is uh, your direction. And that's, that has very much to do with weaving. It, it, yes, uh, and um, the, uh, uh, how, uh, for example, uh, I mean, one of the aspects of, of weaving is that because we, everybody in this room is wearing a textile, but it's put in a zone where we have, uh, it, you could even call it invisible. It's put into the invisible side of things. 
but it can be taken out when you dress in the morning, you make certain choices, and then it's invisible. So the, the, the textile and it has inherently this movement between the invisible and the visible. And I must say, uh, and I know we, uh, uh, well, you know, Chris and I feel we're quite uh, uh, edgy because uh, normally the textile is put on the side of the applied art and it's, uh, 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 diminished in, in value, but uh, that I w wish, for example, uh, in the so-called fine arts, uh, to see something which could pass as freely between the visible and the invisible. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's, let's, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. let's come back to that. I mean, mm -hmm. it seems to be that textiles right now is, 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 is almost like, I'm sorry, I hate to use that word in your presence, it's like a trend. Mm -hmm. uh, we see in Paris the Musée Guimet is going to do well, Asian... Well, I, I started the trend. You, you started the trend, okay. <laughs> okay. If the Musée Guimet is preparing an exhibition of Asian uh, textiles with contemporary art. The Musée d'Art Moderne in Paris preparing one. There was just one in Toulouse, which was fascinating textiles and cinema. Seth Siegelaub, the conceptual art contractor, yeah, right. he uh, showed his collection at Raven Row, and the private for, for uh, Kunsthalle in London, and suddenly conceptual artists are fascinated by textiles. What is that fascination all about, you think? We jump now from 67, yeah. Richard Tuttle, canvases, back, front, against the wall. We jump now 40 years later. You started a trend. You're mm. much in demand. But why is there that fascination? Does it have yeah. to do with romanticism, with love, love, uh, textiles as an expression of love, mm. the very word uh, textile meaning writing with the body, a text? What, what is the fascination about? Or is it yeah. something that we need now new collectibles, mm. new oh, forms yeah. of investment? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is a very good answer. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back to 67 and we don't know, but we know <laughs> why we love textiles. I think that's the most important. Richard, you brought three pieces. One is um, a piece from Java. Uh. Another piece is from the Navajos, and then there is uh, a piece which are man-made fabrics. You have this very, very handsome jacket, which is by a new Japanese designer, which I suppose is also kind of man-made. We know you're fascinated by Yamamoto and the textiles engineers, but can you explain us why you brought these three pieces? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, first of all, the... Uh, uh, I guess it's a kind of statement against uh, uh, re reprodu reproduction. So the the idea of uh, being able to show uh, uh, an actual uh, thing. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm a little em em embarrassed to uh, the, the Navajo uh, piece is is really extraordinary. It's a it's a late classic piece. Shall we hold it up? Well, I'm, that's why I, I was just going to say I'm a little afraid because it has lots of holes <laughs> in it, and and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, even that uh, it has so many holes. In fact, uh, that I, it would str I feel it would stress uh, the material. However, after. Um, the talk. I'd be happy to lay it mm -hmm. out on the ground for anybody who would like to look at it because one of the, uh, uh, I mean, and, and <clears throat> there's a bit of a calculation here because uh, uh, I, I would like to uh, present these textiles not artistically but scientifically. What's you know? the difference? Okay. Um, the, uh, fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in this field, uh, the, you have uh, something called textile scholars, who uh, is a category of uh, art, the art historian. Uh, and the, the, uh, for example, the tools are uh, quite those of a, uh, of a scientist, which you, know, you compare uh, to find out what any one of these is you would compare it with something something else uh, and and arrive uh, hopefully arrive someplace whereas the artistic way of looking at it, you just look straight on at that thing and you never compare you just make a try to make a relationship with the with the thing um, 
And uh, uh, so... So now we're going to look even, at these pieces. Even, even though we are all, you know, and I'm sure everyone in this room falls on the artistic side of things, you know, uh, this uh, field and indeed, uh, you know, working uh, f for the exhibition we're, we're thinking of, it, we first have to make a stab at, at defining the textile. I mean, at least saying what we think the textile is, and maybe that's right or maybe that's wrong. And, and that, that, that that has to hold water in face of the most scary art historian or textile historian who's looking over our shoulder. You know, but you that. proposed that we were going to look at one of these textiles of the tree in a scholarly way. Yeah. Just a test. Yeah. Can you okay. just very briefly okay. show us a textile in a yeah. scholarly way and yeah, yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. in an artistic way? Okay. Oh, oh that's, that's, that's great. That's great. Okay. Well, <clears throat> um, uh, okay, uh, so this uh, this is a is a piece from um, a little village uh, in northern Java in Indonesia, uh, and it's uh, the area is called. Uh, okay, I'm I'm going to really try to do this. Okay, right. I'm, I am now right. uh, an anthropologist who mm -hmm. has become a textile scholar. Think about yeah. your Yale days with the root barnaces. Think about what you're doing right now, researching research with 500 art historians yeah. who are circumventing you at the Getty <laughs> Research Center. You are yeah. you're the scholar. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I, I mean, I hope everybody enjoys this as much as I, as I do. <laughs> I know we're all art people, so, you know, this is like... Later we do it for the art people, okay? Well, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, anyway, uh, uh, and I, uh, I can't uh, uh, give every characteristic, but, for example, uh, an anthropologist would say, uh, when you feel this cloth, and, and uh, these people are literally the last people in an ancient tradition uh, that still grows their own cotton, they spin it, they weave it, and then it's, of course, uh, batiked. Uh, uh, and um, which, uh, I mean, if, if, if we can wrap our mind around the labor intensity of that, uh, it's, it's uh, almost... Uh, Beyond. I mean, we come from a, a culture that, or a civilization that tries to save labor. Uh, this is a case where they try to put la the, uh, as much labor into it as they can. Um, okay. So one of the when you when you uh, okay when when I buy when I acquire a textile, I love for it to 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 feel that it's alive. You know, to have a, a kind of living just to, to move in space. I guess uh, there's... there's you're, like, the, you're like folds. The, the sculptor. sculptor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the yeah, fold. And, and the, the, the fold and, I mean, uh, this is... Uh, okay, so the characters, if you feel this, and anybody is welcome to feel this, you, find, you feel a kind of greasy, a greasy quality. And that offended me uh, at the beginning because, you know, I, I, I clean things. But then, uh, as, a, as a anthropologist and as a scientist, I realized that part of the meaning of this is it's never, never washed. It's just, did this get, get knocked? Okay. Uh, okay. This is um, because one of its intentions among the people who made it uh, is protection. And they feel that, uh, that the uh, washing it would remove some of its protective, protective quality. As, as an anthropologist, I'm playing now an anthropologist or whatever, a linguist, you know that uh, the word cloth is coming from the Sanskrit loot, which means looting because when the slaves rebelled, the first thing they went for, because they were naked, they yeah. went to loot for cloth to yeah, yeah. get dressed. Yeah, so yeah. in a way, that's yeah. part of it. Because the most important thing about these kind of textiles is they look delicate, but they have a very resilient life as, as well. And uh, I'm, I might just add to that as a fellow anthropologist right. mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> that, that uh, uh, it's the uh, elite of these people who have maintained the tradition longest because you know clothing and, uh, in fact, uh, beautiful clothing uh, would be a way to show your status. You know.
Uh, now let's look at one of the, the pieces in an artistic in way. An artistic way. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. This is. Uh, um, we're jumping to. Uh, huh. It's not so easy to change horses. And no. Other. Okay. Um, this is this. I brought this because it's yellow, and I like red, yellow, and blue, for example. But also, it's completely. Uh, it's man-made. Uh, completely man-made. Uh, 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 fibers as opposed to natural fibers and and this is also a commercial uh, it's made for commercial purposes uh, but I find it uh, e extremely uh, beautiful it's uh, from Japan it's uh, by a great textile designer uh, named Junichi Arai I'm sure people know his work uh, he's working been, for Isemiyaki he was Isemiyaki's first uh, uh, textile uh, designer the the uh, and and uh, some of the pioneering which I mean okay this is uh, the anthropologist where uh, uh, there was a uh, a movement in uh, uh, creative textile research to Japan you know in the end of the 20th century uh, and to make a uh, man-made fiber, you, you, you take your inspiration from the silkworm and it, they're all extruded and whatever mixture you want to make of plastics or so on, uh, that uh, gives you the fiber uh, and that can be all under control. But once you have, you weave that, then you have uh, finishing possible like these, uh, one of the components here is this crinkle, this this fold, that you know, in and out, um, which is done much later than anything else. This probably is the last part of that. So with the the so-called man-made fibers, the artist has, uh, and it, it's just like when you can do typography on the computer, where you you have every typeface that ever existed. You know, and if the artist can deal with that and can make that a plus, you're, you're really good to go. Is that going to change our relationship with textiles? Because we see that the natural fibers get completely replaced by man-made fibers, which is not at all anymore about weaving, yeah. about weft, weft. It's not about above and under. It's about the finish. It's about yes. the surface, right. about the tectonics. Is yeah. that something yeah. which is going to change our relationship? Are, is then, are then textiles going to be much more commonly used in architecture and art? Well, Chris, this is, this is really why you know, we artists be, you know, need the scholars, because unfortunately, why they dominate, if they do dominate, and they, I, I would say they do, the field is they're always at the cutting edge. And so, uh, and for a, a uh, what, somebody you know, outside the field, uh, you can't play in the field uh, unless you have some access to the cutting, the cutting right. edge. Mm -hmm. And uh, because now, I, uh, I mean, uh, I might, because I've been doing research on this, I might be a little bit closer to the cutting edge, but, but I'm not, I know I'm not uh, there, but there, the latest trend has been mixing man-made fibers and natural fibers. You know? And that, in a, in a sort of beautiful way, uh, then enlarges the creative potentials uh, as well because you take the the design quality from the man-made side and then uh, and you keep that that creative that creativity and you you bring in the fab the uh, nature-made fibers uh, to the point where it doesn't dominate the creativity you know it's, and that's what we're going to be doing at, right. the, at the turbine hall actually yeah. in the yeah. Tate Modern yeah. Richard uh, you you like all things in tree we saw the tree row piece with the tr uh, with the three nails uh, for you the show in London the White Chapel plus the VNA plus the turbine hall it's a three-way approach when we talk about how to approach textiles we just spoke about you can approach it as a scholar let's say an anthropologist you can approach it as an artist, but there is a third way to approach it as a maker. We just got an illustration of that. Let me ask you about this three-part-type relationship. The Navajo piece has holes, yes. which is quite normal. 
because they look delicate, but every textile has a very rugged, rugged, rugged and resilient life. Would you repair these holes? Would you have restorers repairing them? Because I can imagine that some people here, they, they look at these pieces and say, oh my God, I don't want to buy it, it has holes. Yeah, what, would you yeah. consult people with holes? I mean, with uh, rugs with holes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, in, in, it's a question about value, really. Um, uh, it's a, and, you know, and, uh, for example, I would rather construct a value around that textile that uh, diminishes uh, the need for repair uh, because um, uh, we know, uh, in, for example, I, I just uh, said how important it is for me uh, because weaving uh, is, a, is an art which uh, can be alive, can bring us to, uh, and when any repair is made, it's going to affect the, the because the, the weaver, the great weaver, <laughs> this is what I got from, from Mary Kallenberg. Uh, Kallenberg, the scholar. Yeah, who, uh, the ability to, uh, to recognize the work of a master weaver. It's like, uh, and you know, when you pick up a piece and you realize you're in the hands of a master weaver, it's like looking at Michelangelo or something because they, to weave, uh, the mind has to go into a certain space, which uh, is like in, Maybe that might answer your question uh, about why are people interested in textiles so much at the moment. Well, I think uh, we, we've gone through uh, our, our definitions of time. Uh, you know, we, uh, especially in, in the art field, I, uh, I just spent a half an hour in front of a Giotto and, uh, and I saw that he completely uh, took uh, time in the sense of past, present, and future, and space in terms of near, middle, and far, and took those two tripartite structures, melded them in one unified image. Uh, only a great artist could, could, could do, you know, and that's why Giotto is Giotto. Okay, know? but now to today you said it has to do with that we are beyond a certain interpretation of time, that maybe people are suddenly and becoming massively interested in textiles. And, and that, that, uh, that the, uh, uh, the, uh, what goes in the mind of a master weaver, which translates into their, the work, uh, is a definition of time that we're, uh, I think we're looking for. Is that maybe, has that, can we learn something from musical theory? Because in musical theory, we don't speak so much about chronos, chronology, mm -hmm. but we speak about another definition of time, which is the Greek word kairos, which means uh, time as an opportunity, uh -huh. time as a gift, the attention for time. Do you think it has to do with that, that we suddenly are aware because of all these machines, you know, we, we speak with our thumbs, we do uh, all these choreographies every morning, every hour. I mean, we have a completely different notion of time, we have a completely different notion of chronology. Is, is, it has that to do with our attention, which is a very deep felt, maybe unconscious, bodily felt attention for textiles? Because after all, textiles mean text, writing with the body, from within yeah. the body. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, great, because um, <clears throat> uh, I think uh, uh, an important writer like Merleau Ponty uh, pointed out already in the 50s that we think with our bodies and that the, uh, that the textile as, uh, is, is, uh, is in a breathing relationship with our, our, our bodies. And therefore, uh, uh, you know, we know that w uh, you know, whereas you can't see someone's thoughts, uh, that they're, it, it, you know, in terms of the, the idea that the thought is happening in their head, but you can see what they're thinking in terms of what they're, what they're, they're wearing. And, and so that's a spatial, uh, that the textile 
uh, as Warren certainly uh, brings us uh, and, and in fact tries to solve our uh, spatial needs as well as our time mm -hmm. needs. And uh, I think this might be, I, I don't like to, uh, 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 for example, uh, uh, a lot of times when I go out to a party or something like that, it's, it's very important to, to pick my outfit. And if I do it uh, well, then I have a good time at the party. You know? yeah. so. I, it looks like you have a good time yeah, this morning. I'm having, I'm having a good time. Yeah. Blue shoes, yeah. Yeah. camouflage, leopard, yeah. the new trend. Uh, I, yeah, I should show you the socks. You know, the, the socks are yeah. socks are red. No, no, but but even even mm -hmm. if you you can't, I mean, you, somehow that that's the that you. Uh, I mean, if they were another color, it wouldn't be it wouldn't do, no. work. You know? Let's let's talk about color because um, when we look at your work, which you saw behind us, sixty-seven, the first canvases, then you saw a catalog of the Museum Boymans from Berning in Rotterdam called Oxide Red. We see in the way you use color, and even the way you're dressed, it's like an off color. The oxide red, which is the red of utensils, which is the red of instruments, the instrument of the nomad, is, is never there, this earthware kind of colors. Why do you use these off colors? Because I think if, if there is somebody who is a true specialist and a lover of colors is Tuttle. Tuttle is now doing a research period at the Getty Research Center about color, where just like I said, he's surrounded by 500 young art historians who all want to know everything from him about color. Tell us about color. <laughs> Your problem <laughs> with oxide red. This is, this is the, the next I don't know moment. <laughs> and it's, uh, can you put yeah, your mic yeah, better, yeah, Richard? It's falling, okay, falling yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah. Is that better? Yeah. I'm just asking the regie. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, I, I just see this image on the, right. on the slide. And uh, that, uh, I mean, I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but, but you know, every time there's a commencement of a new work, or a new body of work, you know, I feel uh, uh, with that is a new definition of color. And I'm actually quite proud of that. Uh, um, because um, you know, I think somebody should be uh, f looking at color that way. Uh, um, but um, also, uh, I mean, say wearing red red socks. Um, that is what it is, uh, and and it it can't be compared to using red in a in a painting, for example. Um, even though it's the same red, uh, I find, uh, and you know, uh, to uh, you know, I think one of the, the problems that we all uh, have is, uh, you know, we can make these unities in our minds, but when it comes to the world, it divides, and you know, it's going to wind up you know on this side ultimately or that side ultimately and uh, I find uh, I like the unity much more than the division and and I guess as an artist I spend as much as time as I can to hold off the divisive uh, uh, and I love art because uh, I mean art after all is a uh, it's about unity uh, and and a lot of uh, the uh, problematics in the in the world is is trying to uh, introduce a unity uh, w where when the world receives it as a du duality. It sounds sounds almost like a, a romantic German philosopher of the Enlightenment. You have a fascination for German romantics. 
correct? Uh, Philipp Otto Runge, uh, yeah. Leibniz, you have been speaking about and showing us your fascination for the fold when you hold up a textile. I mean, it's all about the fold. And if there is a writer who spoke so eloquently and so fantastically fascinating about the fold, it's Leibniz. What is your yeah, fascination yeah. <laughs> with German romanticism and German <laughs> philosophy? Well, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I actually have <laughs> been having this mini career lately <laughs> of, of uh, I, uh, just, uh, uh, okay, we, we, I think we've already uh, tested the, uh, uh, our audience in bringing the world of textiles <laughs> so far forward. Now we're going to uh, talk about uh, obscure, uh, how, has anyone ever heard of Philip Otto Runge in the room? It's oh, not oh, too bad. I mean, at yeah, least 2%. Yeah, least so that's good. <laughs> it's a good beginning. Uh, yeah. Philip no, Otto no, Runge. Serious, seriously, yeah, yeah, last year it would have been zero. You know, right, I know. Zero. So you see yeah. it's getting there. Philip Otto Runge is very important for Caspar David Friedrich because he's a color theorist. It, yes, uh, and, but, but I, fi I find uh, uh, I'm very... Uh, you know, that direction we spoke about earlier is just, uh, I'm, a, I'm part of my society, and so, you know, and how my direction and the society's direction uh, goes together. Anyway, um, this uh, uh, moment, and, uh, okay, uh, we, uh, we have, uh, and we use words, there's a kind of word we use, like dada, or beat, uh, which uh, somebody can use, uh, and like they know what it means, and and then somebody else can use that same word, and they don't know what it means. You know? Well, romanticism is one of those words too, you know? and some of the most important romanticist theories. I mean, and I I've had to work hard to to figure this stuff out because, you know, I mean, first of all, we use the word for I mean, it can be used for to describe a kind of architecture with round arches, you know, sometimes, and then it can be used as like something sentimental, and you know, well, 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 you know. but but uh, it's uh, that the real uh, creative theorists uh, around the. Uh, I mean, it, it, this happened at the same time as the the French Revolution, the American Revolution. And these, this was a time when the old order, the old social order, the verticals was in collapse, and a new social order, which we're all benefiting from today, uh, emerged. Well, what were those, how did that happen? You know, what's still true and what's not so true? Uh, and the, one of the uh, I, uh, most important things is, uh, theoretically speaking, uh, that romanticism cannot be defined. And therefore, it has the ability to stay open and, and the ability to inspire generation after generations, even until today. So when, when you, uh, uh, you know, it's just like somebody who, who says, yeah, man, that's beat, you know, and like you go, oh, God, <laughs> this person doesn't know what, you know, doesn't, doesn't know what they're, they're, they're talking about. The, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, also, you know. I'm also asking, Richard, because some people in the art world, some critics, some theoreticians, they have said in the past, and they still say it, not too many, but they still say it, hmm, the post-minimalist art sculpture of Richard Tuttle is maybe too sentimental. It's too lovable, too romantic. I mean, you, you consider this as, as, as a gift to the world, right? To, to talk about these things, I mean, to express ideas like love. Well, uh, I think the, uh, oh gosh, you know, I mean, if, if the artist isn't, it doesn't accept that their work won't be understood for 40 years after they make it, you know, then, you know, they're gonna have, you know, uh, it's, it's not realistic. I mean, when, when I began, uh, you know, art was all about, oh, you know, how cool it is to separate science and the spirit, you know, and, and those are the big guys, you know, and anybody who can, you know, do that. But, like, I found, you know, one, they weren't interest, they weren't asking interesting questions, 
uh, and, and if they, too, if they were, they could not never find answers that way. So I, I, and I must say, uh, and you know, I felt, you know, to uh, the world already seemed to me going in a global direction, and so why not look at some other cultures? You know, it's another access to the textile world, and 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 on a on a uh, another level, you see, uh, science and the spirit are actually live together very happily. And lo and behold, that's where I found I could get answers to the questions that were in my head. You know, so what's what's not to like? You know? mm -hmm. Let's go now to pots. We have a pot here with a, a very interesting color. Um, it's it's definitely not earthware. It's a, it's a typical. We call it a typical turtle color. Why this fascination for pots? Um, I uh, I don't know if. Uh, <clears throat> This is actually uh, uh, <laughs> uh, bending, bending something. This is actually uh, available here at the Gemini G G E L, uh, uh, but it's uh, you know uh, I really love printmaking, uh, but I want to uh, take printmaking to places it's never been before, and. Um, and I apologize to my publishers because you know they, it's not easy. Um, but um, what I realized, in, uh, it, okay, and so the the, the hard thing, uh, you know, when you want to move into new territory, is to have a hundred percent confidence that it is a print. And so that's why the Getty has been very important. You know, like just yesterday, we're in a, uh, I spent the whole afternoon looking at 16th century Italian prints, you know, which, you know, there are hundreds of examples there. And, and that's part of a, a, a practice where uh, uh, to, to get the print, the, the print under my skin to a degree where I can come out in a form like that. And, and what I, why I like this is the, the, you, to get the print, you have to walk around it. Uh, and I mean, you have to, the, these marks, as it were, are the same like engraving lines of, say, Albrecht Durer or something like that. But whereas with him, you can see it on, I think it's much cooler to have the print in a three dimensional relationship. So I'll just, I'm just going to turn this around. So, and it's a story. Uh, also, oh, I, I, I should tell Chris this. This is, uh, I'm, uh, but. I'm I'm having an issue now. Your because, microphone. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm having an issue now because, y y you know, uh, even though I'm a 20th century artist, I find that 20th century is not looking too good at the moment. You know, and you know, well, 21st century is better. <laughs> uh, well, I no, I mean clearly we're 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 it's you know we're beginning to form uh, the identity that that you know the 21st century will will will, will take. And uh, you know, one of I mean, I've I, you know, you can look at my work from my first show, and it's always been uh, against uh, you know modernism, the tenets. It's always been trying to undermine the tenets of modernism. I've never been like I mean, to me, modernism promised much more than it could deliver. You know, and and so why? And you know, to be to be modernist, you know, you had to like. You know, learn the catechism and submit, and, and all of this for what? You know, like if you can, if you can give me what you you claim, yeah, I'll submit. You know, but you can't. You know, so I'm not going to do it. And uh, and so uh, this uh, uh, and you know, one of the the things that modernism was against uh, was the narrative. You know? And and I find. You know, like if, say by contrast, you look at a medieval altarpiece like that, and you see at the same time, you know, you can see like a whole like narrative that's like you know maybe a thousand years something like that, and 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 like you know wow in one moment you know I can see all that you know that's pretty you can't see that on TV there's no form uh, in which you can get uh, that range. You know. Was that also one of the 
ideas behind this very, I would say, lyrical, I'm not going to use the word romantic, but very lyrical work <laughs> defying um, the architecture of aqua on the Ellison Island, uh, because the Ellison Island yeah. is, of course, a homage to uh, 1937 Stuttgart, the Weissenhof seedling, which is an icon of modernism. Uh, and there we see these beautiful prints, I call them now prints, okay, these yeah. tiles yeah. made in Turkey. Was that one of the, the ideas behind it? Um, well, uh, I, you know what, I, I actually, uh, I, I don't want to, uh, but, if, uh, you know, on a very deep level, for me that is, uh, is about the 9-11 experience, you know, uh, because there's a, uh, the, there's a, uh, it's as if there's this projectile that comes from out there someplace, maybe, you know, the, even, uh, and, and it strikes, uh, it, it falls down, it goes into the water, there's a, a black circle uh, in the pool, which uh, uh, marks the, uh, and that seemed to be very important in the, in the, in the project, of course, from across the water or from a boat or from, you, don't, you can't see every part of it. But, but the, uh, this notion that, um, the, uh, that uh, surprise, unexpected projectile uh, uh, with a, a huge force uh, is implied, uh, then uh, makes this splash, uh, which uh, you know definitely sends uh, water or matter you know up, but then it, of course it 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 falls down the with the gravity, and so there there it's really a recording of these two uh, motions, uh, and. Uh, I find it's, uh, y you know, some of the most effective monuments, you know, don't uh, explain themselves to you. They don't need to, you know, but they need to be there because if they're, you know, it's, it's, if they're not there, we can't even, there's no humanity, something. So for me that, that and, and indeed outdoor sculpture, uh, you know, has to have, uh, Humanity. I mean, it's like people don't. It's not like a museum where they go because they want to, or a gallery. They, you know. That's also one of the reasons why you are interested in pottery and textiles because of these human conditions. Because especially textiles and potteries, we protect ourselves with textiles. Mm. We use pottery to way to walk the walk of our life. It's, it's a very human condition. Is, is yeah. that what, uh, what your interest uh, is in textiles and pottery as well? Interesting. He's, he's pretty terrific, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. Uh, I mean, that's a... Uh, because uh, in some uh, sense, I mean, like, I find uh, as, a, as an American, um, one of the uh, uh, issues we have here that characterizes our lives is we simultaneously have a culture and a civilization. And it's really, you know, among other uh, unique factors, that's, uh, there's almost never been a, uh, a situation on Earth that's had to uh, marshal those two things. Uh, and I must say, again, you know, growing up here and learning about that when, you know, people use the word culture and civilization interchangeably, you know, my civilization, my culture, you know, sort of thing. But they're in fact completely different, you know, that we, uh, uh, and we inherited uh, the, our culture from France and we inherited our civilization from, from England. We, we thought very, we were very proud of ourselves because we got the best, we got the best of both. But then we're in the situation where we've got two bests, you know, and how do you, you know, and every day uh, you have to... You, stu you yeah. still have two bests. I mean, Democra yeah. Democrats and Republicans. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, that, that's, uh, but, but that's a good example because, um, uh, you know, the Americans' job, the first thing is to keep the conversation open between, you know, the reds and the blues, I mean, and then the second job is to be as strongly blue or as strongly red as you possibly can. Well, you know, that's hard, 
you know, mm -hmm. and 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 we, you know, we've, you know, there's a generosity, uh, and uh, but I, I find we we should, I mean, it's not about sympathy uh, uh, from others. I think it's we should be we should have a sympathy for ourselves, you know, to know what we take on every every morning and and. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's you know I, I just mentioned that I know it's sort of not the main subject of conversation but but it it does uh, I mean you know I'm I guess quite ambitious in art uh, and so you know to to make an art that uh, satisfies or gives a uh, helps other people uh, in their daily pursuit of of. Uh, interfacing culture and civilization, and then to move on, to move beyond that, you know, to because uh, uh, you can do that in art, you know, and that's uh, yeah. This is the art of politics. Put your microphone. Oh, okay. This is the art of politics. Let's talk a little bit more about the politics of art. Uh, we have seen a couple of images where uh, the works look rather tiny, total. Uh, is being said to love small scale. He's a master of small scale. Now we see a bigger work here, like Aqua. Yet it's dealt with in in the macrocosmos of the splash. You know, you can divide it in these very small particles. You can look at it from very close to these micro particles. Um, the art world is different. The art world is becoming more and in, more and more interested in really big, and the big is growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. What is the difference between scale and size? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, you know, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, there are different kinds of art. Uh, let's face it, uh, and um, uh, but. Uh, there's a kind of art where the artist is trying to learn uh, the laws of art. And there's a kind of artist that's born knowing the laws of art. And, you know, so uh, if you're born knowing the laws of art, your art then becomes uh, about <laughs> uh, uh, twisting them, uh, uh, doing uh, some relation between them, or at, at the highest level to to make a law or to create a new law of, of art, uh, because you know uh, art is not life, and God knows we have enough laws in li in life, too many laws in life, uh, but we don't know enough about art, and any genius who can can actually. Uh, give us. Uh, I mean, it's truly charting a, a, a new territory, and uh, that uh, that uh, the increase of the laws of art will increase the quality of. Uh, and 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 if I if I just may say, uh, is it time for commercials or time for opening to the questions? I don't know. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> Because I do understand what you're he's, saying, but at the same really time, I, this you know, he actually gives me credit for starting starting his, you know. But I, I obviously, he's, you know, uh, he's my, I don't know, beyond. You can't even say you're my my best, uh, uh, what uh, student, 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 student. student. But, I'm but your he's, best student. He's gone. He's now. He's telling the, the teacher a thing or two. You, you, you make small-scale sculptures, but you like big books. I mean, this big book books. is so oh, big yeah, that it's yeah. falling apart. Yeah. I mean, this is 2000 <laughs> Walter Koenig. You're preparing a smaller book, which is going to come out about and with text by Agnes Martin. Here you see all these off-colors of Richard Tuttle. Look, there we are, there we are again. Yeah. Why do you like big books? I mean, the San yeah. Francisco catalog <laughs> is, you know, yeah. it's unbearable. It's oh, like yeah. eight kilos and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this one is, uh, you can buy it here, by the way, it's yeah. time for commercials. This one is six kilo seven, uh, dangerous when you fly economy class, like I do, because then uh, the extra ticket costs more than the book. I mean, very confusing the laws of art, isn't it? Uh, so explain us the big book thing. Um, yeah, well, well I mean, uh, gen uh, I don't think there's a general answer, but, but uh, this book um, <coughs> was... Uh, 
from a, a, a body of, of work uh, <clears throat> that uh, where each piece, uh, there are exactly 80 of them, and they all address a format of, uh, of three foot uh, by uh, one foot horizontal rectangle. And uh, the book then, uh, in order to show the scale, this gets us to scale, um, that uh, the reader of the book always has this original reference because sometimes the images will uh, get quite small. I mean, say if the piece itself was quite large, that meant the photograph of the image had to get quite small. So as you, this kind of sculpture, as you're turning the pages, you're, each page gives you a, 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 a different um, image uh, that m maybe even that's the art history. Instead of comparing it with one of the other images, you can compare it with the book itself. And most uh, uh, people, or uh, you could even say biologically, it's yeah, getting it's bigger six, and bigger. Six, six feet. Yeah. I can fly with this book. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's. It's quite, when, when uh, we first introduced the show in uh, Schl uh, Schleswig-Holstein. Schleswig-Holstein, uh, Richard. Uh, mm -hmm. the, everybody loved it so much and everybody left the opening with this book under their arm and you saw yeah. them walking through this park with these wings, you know, it was beautiful. I yeah. can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, Richard Tuttle's art is giving us wings. We, yeah. want to give, we want to give you words, questions to Richard Tuttle. We have a microphone, and I see a hand to your right, and then in the middle. This is going to be an auction, right? OK, first question to the right. Yes, hello. Um, I would like you to speak for a minute about why textiles. I know you said you didn't have an answer, but um, can I say, can you speak to like pattern and structure and how um, it's very inherent in textiles, but also comes up in other forms of art? painting, a lot of people are doing patterns, and you see all this organizational. Go ahead. Um, That's a question for the scholar. The, sc Tuttle. the scholar, okay. yes, 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 yes. Here we are. Um, when uh, I, I was invited to do this uh, book uh, called Indonesian uh, Textiles, and the, the main uh, text of it was about artists who use uh, textiles, or you can find the use of textiles in their work. And I was quite surprised uh, to, in looking at art that way, uh, to uh, go to uh, one of my favorite artists, and I think un unre still unrecognized uh, how important uh, his work is, is uh, Ad Reinhardt, because uh, the you know, the, the, uh, the uh, abs absolute painting, the square, uh, is actually uh, a woven, uh, you have a, uh, a uh, uh, in the nine squares, uh, you're, you're basically, you have a, uh, everything of an under, over uh, textile uh, structure uh, present. Um, and, and even in my case, if you recognize that and uh, as a, uh, a basis for his paintings uh, that he, uh, they reveal themselves to you uh, more and usually that's an indication of, uh, of some kind of truth um, um, but uh, I also one of the things I've, I've very often said uh, was uh, you know in Ve Venetian paintings of the <clears throat> uh, 16th century, the artists were uh, asked uh, to paint the saint. Uh, and, you know, what's the difference between a saint and not a saint? Um, and the uh, artists who uh, uh, succeeded in that were the first ones to use uh, paint, uh, uh, fabric or textile as, and the, the way of glazing and, and uh, oil uh, paint on to a woven surface uh, created a kind of uh, luminosity that uh, 
gave the viewer a sense of the uh, like a uh, this the level of spiritual condition of a of the saint. You know. mm -hmm. We have a question here in the second row. The second row, excuse me, first there. Hi, first I want to say this has been absolutely fabulous discussion and uh, dialogue. Um, I was wondering if you could comment on how in a time when so much of what we do and experience is on flat screens, we're particularly drawn to textiles which have texture and are tactile uh, 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 yeah. and envelop us and have a you know a, a dimension that goes way beyond the the screen. Uh, and you mean the flat screen as the LEDs as uh, all of that, all of mm. all this even in our, yeah, all of mm. what we do when we're on you know right. iPhones. Textiles versus uh, Steve Jobs. Okay. Exactly. Good. Yes. Richard. Yeah. Richard Tuttle yeah. versus Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I find um, uh, you know this. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm going to say I uh, I believe uh, that uh, uh, things develop out of original of of an original uh, situation and and this. The United, the, uh, this, uh, what we call the United States of America, uh, is developing out of a uh, a black white, uh, uh, a black white uh, uh, attempt uh, to uh, structure inf information. Uh, it, it okay. So, um, uh, whereas, for example, personally, uh, I. I like the grays, you know, and I like uh, all the infinite of, of possibilities outside the black and the white. And so, and I would even say that in the end, the, the grays are triumphant. However, I have to admit that this uh, information system that is really uh, the, the, the computer uh, and the digital world and the cyberspace world is all uh, I mean, in my opinion, uh, a direct uh, product from the uh, f founding idea of the black, the black white, and I am, I am really. Uh, I mean, in, in terms of, I, I don't, I don't want this to turn into a, 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 pep, a pep talk for America, but, but I think it's a, it's an. I mean, there is, it could not have come from another civilization. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, uh, and, and then if you look back far enough, uh, the, uh, what, we, what appears to us as a non-textile surface uh, may in fact be a textile surface. And that I think would account for another huge interest in textiles at the moment because we uh, we somehow know, and this is what I was trying to get at with my, my cloth octagonal pieces, where you, you know you have everything you need to know, and yet there's, this, there's also this terrifying relationship uh, and, and, and really, really intelligent grasp of something you don't know. And, and I think we're trying to figure that out. And textile is, is really come, uh, that's why I was, I was very proud to introduce this man-made uh, part of textiles because a lot of us will look at back to ethnographic material and to, uh, you know, and, and, and that's profitable, but, but it's also profitable to look uh, uh, because, you know, as, as Chris was saying, you know, uh, text, texting, how we, you know, we use that word. I mean, it's all coming from the same uh, derived word, which means to put something on top of something else. It's, I'm going to yeah. put on top of you another question. Yeah. Um, I thought there was a question here. Yes, you. Question here. By the way, uh, you see that Richard Tuttle is also making a plea to dress up even better next year at Miami <laughs> Art Basel, right? Not only at night. Yes, question. my question is about context, if you would put yourself in a 
the most broad context that I can think of, both for the ceramics and the textiles. And, uh, and I think I'm, I mean the context of uh, technology. The ceramics that we use have been around for tens of thousands of years. And, it's, and we use baked sand. And the same baked sand is now what, what used to hold our, uh, the, the content we used to hold, uh, we used to hold with ceramics before was food or water or something, and now we hold our information because our computers are made from that same baked sand, right? The silicate of that. Our our jet planes now are most our so newest. So, what is your question? My question is about context okay. and the and the technology. Our newest planes are woven out of uh, carbon fibers. Yeah, yeah. So, mine is just a question of how you place uh, your ceramics and textiles within that kind of broadest of human technology, uh, technological context, that's it. That's a very good question, Richard. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, well, I have no problem. Um, and um, I find uh, uh, that's one of the delicious uh, areas of the, of the textile uh, because, uh, you know, Kristen, my job is to uh, uh, take advantage of the potential uh, in, in this subject, but to take advantage of the potential, you have to know it's impossible to uh, explore uh, in, in infinity. And, and, that's, and I would say the context uh, is, is a strange combination of the infinite and the finite, and, and that's uh, you know, that seems to be also what the textile is. You know, but you are not afraid of these new technologies because you showed us this no, beautiful no, no. example of man-made fiber. Uh, we both share an, an, a fascination for Ise, Ise Miyake and what he did uh, in Ahmedabad. We share a fascination for Yamamoto. And Splash has Splash. been produced by computer, through computer oh, yeah, techniques, yeah. And yeah. which were then transferred to uh, Is. Ism uh, Izmir yeah, in Turkey yeah, to yeah. make this incredible yeah. ceramic. So without these technologies and without yeah. these new technologies, yeah. I don't think we go that far. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, I can just uh, say that a part of Splash uh, is a theory of random. Mm -hmm. And we went to the top mathematicians on Earth uh, and took a long time. And finally, uh, we were given a, a formula uh, but it would take eight, it was the fastest computers, it would take eight lifetimes to prove. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's like the, the one postcard saying, once the order has been found, everything yeah, can be changed yeah, around. It, it is. Thank there you yeah. for that, that one. That liberty, I mean, yeah, yeah. Freedom uh, for all. Yeah. We have a question over there on the sixth row. Seven, seven, sixth row. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the notion that um, perhaps why there's so much of a return to craft both in art and also in commerce, is yeah. that there's a shared intuitive feeling that as a people on a planet that is in peril, we need to go back to an origin of understanding fragility and materiality. Hmm. Hmm. Um, the, you know, the, the way the artist, the, there's a, a contract, there's always a social contract with the artist and it's always being rewritten, and, but the way it's written right now it's very vague uh, whether the artist uh, is a craftsperson or is a kind of uh, philosopher, uh, theorist. Uh, and um, when I find you arrive at that, that uh, high, uh, remote uh, place of uh, abstraction, uh, the, the other end looks very attractive. You know, you really want to get your hands on some material and, and make something. And I think Chris is, we talked uh, this morning a, a lot about ma making, the importance of making. Making is incredibly important. Yeah. Uh, mm, I think that artists want to go, I mean, they go, want to go away from these huge factories where they have other people doing this stuff. But I see with young artists, I mean, there is this amazing thing about making bronze, ceramics, pottery, and I think that's a very interesting, yeah, yeah. interesting movement. We take one more question in the front, and then you can all come and admire our Navajo halls here. 
<laughs> Mr. Tuttle, how do you distinguish between textile as function versus textile as art? Are they interchangeable to you? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of, uh, uh, I admire uh, this, this is an Indonesian textile uh, because uh, it's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you wear it, it's art. If it's folded up, it's art. If you're looking at it, it's art. If you put it in storage to bring out on ceremonial occasions, it's art. If you include it as part of your dowry, you know, for your prospective uh, spouse, it's art. And the, uh, I don't know, uh, I mean, uh, of, a, of another, uh, such a success to have, I mean, because, I mean, that art, art should be available. And in, I'm sorry, in our cultures, I've worked in museums, and the combination of the insurance companies and the rules and the regulations and everything that you can't, you, in, you know, the cutbacks and the budget and everything, art, our art is inaccessible. And when I compare the accessibility of this kind of art with what, what, how the direction ours is going, I, you know, this looks pretty good to me. And it's also, in that context, wonderful that um, some textile collectors, I think about Seth Siegelaub and Richard Tuttle, they don't have the textiles in the house, like hanging with spotlights. It's so beautiful to visit Richard in New York, and then you see on a beautiful 18th century old chair, you see a pack of folded textiles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Richard is going through them and folds them neatly back, and they go back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, no, it's, but I, you know, in, in some it reminds me of your art because well, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. because your art is yeah. very much about the right installation, yeah. but then again, it's not about installation. That was almost the crisis of March at Tucker in '75, wasn't it? Yes. yes uh. yeah, yeah. So, can can you say something the way you pre preserve and put your textiles in your home away and use them or not use them? I think that would be a nice advice for you when you come next year, Richard and I. We will open here in Miami a textile gallery. It's not true. Anyway, so can, can, you, can you just tell us how you preserve textiles? Um, well, uh, Chris was uh, speaking about an experience that, uh, that, that he, he had. And uh, uh, one of my, the latest areas of textiles I'm collecting is uh, American uh, uh, 18th century uh, linen. Uh, that is, uh, you might get a, a towel, and it's only about that big, and it's, it's pure white. Um, uh, maybe it has a hem on it, but it's, um, uh, it, something that minimal to use, uh, uh, to mock, to really mock the, the way minimalism is, is used, uh, is, uh, 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 pleases me. Uh, because, for example, Chris, I could take that out and say, just, you know, feel this, you know, put this in your hands, which was its purpose, because you, uh, uh, it, uh, it was to augment your sensual pleasure relationship with the world and see if that, that doesn't. Uh, and, and it's, it's also, it, it's, it's, uh, mysterious, um, and also why I claim uh, art, uh, because the uh, one towel like that from one weaver will give you a completely different sensation than another towel that would look to the eye the same. But when, when you uh, a, uh, find, uh, you know, there, there was a, a, the first question back there, uh, 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 could have a, a, a good answer in terms of looking at Indonesian textiles, which again are l considered lower uh, in uh, the world's appreciation than, say, Peruvian. But there, those textiles uh, can either be uh, dyed before weaving or dyed after weaving. And you, uh, in those two choices, uh, you are open uh, to a world which can deliver uh, 
uh, you know, information, uh, sense experience, uh, uh, in, in, in rich, uh, and you know, change your apperceptions, and uh, and plus, uh, I must say, in, in Indonesia, they uh, uh, it's a culture uh, which has, uh, for centuries, been able to absorb influences of the most uh, 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 conflicting culture and create a unity in them, and that the textile uh, is fundamental. Uh, to their being able to do something which I find is uh, is a model for uh, what we should be need the world needs to be done today you know, so. ladies and gentlemen Richard Turtle textiles thank you